and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to talk to you about some, a few different spice mixes that you can make at home. Um, the first one we're going to do is a lemon pepper spice seasoning mix, whatever you want to call it, that you can use on mainly chicken is what it's good for, but you can also use it on fish. Um, we don't cook a lot of fish in our family, but chicken, yes we do. So all you need are three ingredients to do this, which is a wonderful thing. So you're going to have to have about a fourth of a cup of black pepper corn. So you don't want this already ground. You want to leave it, you want to buy it in a corn form. And then you're also going to have two teaspoons of coarse salt. Now here's the tricky part. As you can see here, I've got a, five lemons here that I've already zested. But instead of using a, a zester, technically, I just peeled with a paring knife the peel off. And you want to leave as much of the white on the lemon as you can because that's bitter. So you want to peel your lemons as like so, and then I've got them on a baking sheet with parchment, and I've got them white side down, so peel side up on this baking sheet, and then I've got my oven preheating to the lowest setting it would let me do, and my oven goes down to 175. So I'm going to put these in there, but I'm going to keep an eye on them. About every 20 minutes, I'm going to check them because it may take three hours. It may take less, depending on your oven temperature, to really just dry them out. That's what you're doing. You're not going to make them turn black. You want them to dry out. So. As soon as they come out, you're going to take them out of the oven, set them on the ski sheet to cool a little bit, and then you're going to grab your peppercorns and a dried out lemon rind. You're going to put them in a food processor or a blender or a spice grinder. I have one of these little small like food chopper processors, so I'm going to use this. You're going to grind the pepper and the lemon zest or lemon peel together um, until it's pretty finely ground, a, like a coarse chop if you were going to do that or a coarse salt, uh, and then you're going to add your coarse salt to that, your kosher salt. Um, you don't have to grind the salt up, it's, it's fine enough as it is, you're just going to mix it with a fork. And this will actually keep in an airtight container for about six months. It'll stay a little longer than that if you wanted to use it for longer, but it's going to start to lose its potency at that point. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop those lemon peels into the oven. Um, the other seasoning mix that we're gonna talk about today is a steak seasoning mix. And that one, no preparation like this needed. You're just gonna dump a few things together. So that one will have, that one's gonna have a few more ingredients. It's not just gonna be your three. It's gonna have salt, ancho chili powder, cumin, garlic, black pepper, sugar, and a little bit of thyme. And thyme does well with chicken pretty much in any recipe. So. If you wanted to add a little bit of the thyme to the, the lemon pepper seasoning after you've ground it up and everything and just throw in some dry thyme, you could totally do that. You could totally get up to you. Or you could just wait and add it to certain recipes when you wanted to, if you didn't want the entire amount of your lemon pepper seasoning to have thyme in it, if that makes any sense. And once you get done with this video, I, at the end of the notes in the video, you will see the actual measurements and recipes for both those seasoning mixes, the lemon pepper and the steak seasoning. And for anyone who is a Patreon member with me, um, if you're not, you should definitely check that out. There's all kinds of cool benefits for that. But if you're not, or if you are already, you can watch this video, get these recipes, but also check out your Patreon this week. I'm also going to include um, a taco seasoning mix that I use at home probably twice a week when we have ground beef tacos or fajitas or quesadillas or whatever it may be. I use it all the time. And so I'm also going to include the recipe for the taco seasoning, which is just really, really versatile as well. And you can always kick it up a notch and add a little bit of extra spices on the on the, the uh, taco seasoning if you would like to. Okay, so for the steak seasoning, obviously this is going to be good for steak. It's good. You can use it as a dry rub. You can just, when you go to grill, pat a little bit on one side of your steak before you grill it. But I also use it on pork chops. I love it on pork chops. So you can kind of play around with this and make it your own as well and use it on what you think it will be best on. It'll be really good on a roast as well. 
you're going to start off with one fourth of a cup of coarse salt and two tablespoons of black pepper, coarsely chopped black pepper. I went ahead and ground up some black peppercorns for the two tablespoons worth. Now I've got both those in this bowl already. And to that, I'm going to add three tablespoons of ancho chili powder. And this is really good. I'm just going to kick it up a little bit, nice and smoky. All right, so that's three tablespoons of ancho chili powder. Now we're gonna add two tablespoons of ground cumin. This is another one that I use a lot. So only two tablespoons of this though. Okay, and now we need two tablespoons of garlic powder. Another one I use a lot. the last, or no, I'm sorry, not the last, and then two tablespoons of sugar, sweeter is always better, and only one tablespoon of dried thyme. Dump that in. Now, all you have to do is grab a fork. No reason to grind it up. The pepper's already ground up, so we're just going to grab a simple fork and stir that in. benefits to making your own seasoning mixes is that you know what's in it. Um, I know a lot of people, whether they're gluten-free or vegan or I don't know, whatever else, it's hard to know what's in products that are pre-made or pre-cooked or pre-anything. So this kind of guarantees that for you. And it just makes your life a little bit easier. So for instance, when I make steak or pork chops for the next month or so, I don't have to get all these seasonings out. I grab my one container and I'm good to go. Measure it out and done and just remake as needed. The important thing is to keep it in a dry place in an airtight container. So, I mean, if you think about it, all these spices you buy at the grocery, just have a little screw on lid, a glass container, any, you could be a reusable jar that you have as long as it has a sealed top to it. Um, it could be some kind of Tupperware container. Any of those I think would be totally fine. You just don't want to leave it somewhere that a lot of moisture can get to it. So, and there's that. And so it's kind of a pretty color. It looks very kind of peppery. I like it. So, and this makes quite a bit. So this is going to be your steak seasoning. And I'm going to include all of the measurements that will, all the measurements will pop up as I film, but I'll also have them listed at the end of the video. So I've got my lemon peel still going. It's going to continue to dry out and bake and I will pop back on when it comes out so you can see all that comes together. Okay, so we're back. They baked in my oven at 175 for, let me see, I got on my notes, four hours and 45 minutes. Now, I kept rotating the pan every half hour or so, like from the top to the bottom, and I would spin it around. And as you can see here, I mean, some of them are still a little bit yellow, some are a little bit dry on the edges, the little pieces probably got two done. So I'll probably just not use those really small pieces. It smells really good. My house smells like a big lemon, so that's kind of nice. So they're a little bit warm, like room temperature, but nothing. I mean, the oven never got above 175, so it wasn't bad. So now that I have those, I just have a really small little food processor here, and I'm going to dump in my peppercorns, and I'm going to take these and just dump these in. And I apologize for my look since it's been, you know, over four hours. I've worked out and cooked dinner and the little cleaning since the last time you all saw me. So, hair had to be pulled up. Okay. Get all these in here. I'm telling you, it smells so good. I do wonder, I mean, they were in there so long. They probably permeated my oven and now all my stuff tomorrow is going to smell like lemons. Not that I have a problem with that. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to use. I don't want to use anything too dark. Still smell good though. Okay. So, 
turn this on. The, and the settings on this, it's a Cuisinart mini prep processor and it has just a low and a high. I'm gonna start on low and bump it to high until it's like a coarse chop. You kinda wanna break up the peppercorns um, into large flakes. For some, but that's the biggest that I can see. The rest of them are pretty tiny. Peppers all ground up. It smells so good. Okay, so in here I have my salt, which is two teaspoons of salt, and I'm just going to dump the lemon pepper on top. I'm gonna grab a fork, toss them together. Now, if you don't want this much this much salt, you could do half of the salt and just kind of see what you think when you go to use it. If it's not enough, you could always add more. I hope you all can see that. Oh my gosh, I can sit here and smell this all night. Okay, so again, into a airtight container, dry, cool place, lasts about six months, smells really good. Actually, I'm gonna actually use it this weekend. Um, if it turns out okay, I will send you all the recipe. It smells so good. So thanks for watching today's video. It was just kind of a few quick mixes of seasoning, nothing fancy, but I think these can really go a long way in your kitchen and you can use them time and time again. So thanks for watching.